Welcome back. In first module under capacity planning, we discussed about uh, various tools which helps know your database workload better, such as AWR reports, ADDM, ActiveSense, and History reports. We also tried uh, to understand what is database time, and uh, all of these tools are based on DB time model. And now we are going to discuss about approaches for sizing system resource for database deployments. So, as well as we will also talk about how to interpret the stats uh, gathered via these tools. So the first one, database sizing concept, is going to cover about storage as well as I/O considerations. So you need to collect detailed storage information for each source database for each of the four segment types that includes tables, indexes, logs, as well as others. And the AWR metrics physical read write total io request per second are used for measuring io workload of a database instance so for destination sizing requirements based on uh, asm redundancy you need also the iops as well as write iops uh, separately since the number of writes required will depend on the asm redundancy which is desired at the cloud infrastructure destination so some of the prerequisites like you have already gathered the source database segment type uh, amount allocated amount actually used table space size redo logs file size db recovery area size so these all are considered when you are looking at sizing the storage as well as ios you need to also estimate the size based on uh, various types and levels of compression you have in your mind when you are considering a new platform the IO requirements can be collected as IO request per second, that is known as IOPS, IO bandwidth, that is MB per second, and ratio of IO bandwidth to IOPS can be used to characterize each source database workload as either OLTP or decision support system. So reduction in IO requirements achieved by moving to XR database cloud options, so that is another factor we need to uh, think about. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Database provides advanced compression as well as hybrid columnar compression option that has to be considered or factored during storage and I.O. planning. So uh, an estimate of how much space can be saved by compressing the data, uh, it again depends on the segment type and database version and uh, estimates for several types and levels of compressions are available in uh, cloud infrastructure like OLTP. Uh, compression or hybrid columnar compression so we'll see in later slides how to use those uh, advisors in order to derive to these kind of information the another consideration if you are planning for any exadata based systems like exadata cloud uh, service exadata cloud at customer or autonomous transaction processing databases uh, dedicated or serverless so they all are based on exadata storage server and exadata storage server is engineered a storage system that provides you a uh, certain unique technology of the database machine and that also involves like a smart scan a smart flask assay a smart flask logging io resource manager uh, a storage indexes as well as hybrid columnar compression so the hardware component of Exadata storage server is uh, referred as Exadata cell and uh, that has to be factored uh, based on uh, how much storage capacity do you, you need as well as uh, also you have to keep in mind the performance of the database system. The CPU cores in the Exadata storage servers are dedicated to provide features such as smart scan, SQL processing and that is done in uh, basically it is uploaded to the Exadata storage. So an estimate of how much space can be saved by compressing the data is important. Depending on the segment type and database version, estimates for several types and levels of compressions are available such as OLTP and SCC. We estimate how much space we can save if we had to compress a segment and this package takes a segment and compression type and returns a number which gives us 
the above information. So number returned is a ratio of the number of blocks when segment is uncompressed to the number of block when the segment is compressed. The package DBMS compression as of now supports tables, indexes and uh, large objects. So for database version which is less than 11.2, only OLTP compression type on table segments are supported. For target version 11.2 and above, less than 12.102, compression advice will estimate compressed space for OLTP query high, query low, archive high and archive low uh, can be evaluated. For lob segment types are high, medium and low and any database which is version greater than 12.102, uh, there are some additional compression types like in memory, no compressed, DML query, low query, high capacity, low capacity, high, etc. are supported. So, for index segments, the type of compressions could be high as well as low. So, now let's talk about how to size a CPU and for estimating uh, CPU requirements, average active session plays an important role. So that is compared with the number of CPU available on the system and if average active session far exceeds the number of CPU then database performance is likely to suffer. So on the other hand when the value is significantly less than the number of CPU so performance would be fine at least for the database perspective and if there are any performance bottleneck they are likely to lie some other places. So average active session is DB time over elapsed time for a particular workload. And reducing database time metric is the main goal for Oracle self-tuning tool, ADDM as well as any new consolidation scenario. And it can be measured directly from underlying metric view from uh, active session history samples. So both sample interval and retention period of AWS snapshots are under user's control. So active session history sampling is at one second interval which we discussed in uh, our previous uh, session. So AS is based on database time and database time is the amount of elapsed time in microseconds spent performing database usable calls. So it includes CPU time, IO time as well as active wait time but it excludes any kind of idle wait times. So it does not include the time spent on instance backdown processes such as PMON etc. Looking at the memory requirements, uh, we have several processes. Uh, like SGA and PGA related uh, parameters, total PGA located which is available in AWR can be used. If PGA aggregate target in its parameter value is higher, then we should be considering that. And uh, SGA related advice can be derived from V$ SGA target advice or you can get the actual SGA directly from the AWR reports. So you'd be able to see SGA target or SGA max size parameters which are part of uh, AWR uh, report. So in OCI, a shape defines the number of vertical compute units that is known as OCPUs and this is important as the amount of RAM which is available for an instance is tied with the OCPUs in most of the data management uh, options which are available such as bare metal or database cloud service virtual machines. So when you select a shape for your instance consider the nature of application that you are going to deploy as well as number of users you expect to use the application and also how you want to scale the workload in the future. So you need to remember that uh, CPU and memory resource that has to be also used by the operating system. So to determine the shape that meets your resource requirement, you may want to experiment with a shape and test it with a representative workload. Another important consideration to keep in mind is uh, VM based shapes you can get maximum of uh, roughly 240 GB of memory uh, whereas in bare metal shape you can get up to 756 GB of DRAM per instance. Dedicated Exadata based offerings provides 750 GB of DRAM per DB compute nodes and uh, in a smaller shape like quarter rack you can get roughly 1.5 terabyte of DRAM in a quarter rack configuration. So looking at requirement and sizing consideration, you need to determine the database size and growth rate and you are going to use basically AWR reports or AWR minor reports or OEM consolidation workbench, AWR warehouse if you have available through enterprise manager. 
you need to determine the IOPS requirement which you can estimate based on AWR reports or any other operating system monitoring tools. You need to also look at uh, performance requirement, high availability requirement, RTU and RPOs. Network bandwidth requirement has to be also considered for application and database operation. You need to determine the level of control you want to have such as autonomous which has serverless and dedicated versus automated database services like XRCS or uh, DBCS versus any customer managed. So that is going to be a deciding factor how much control you want to have in the new platform. And finally, like you are going to validate the sizing using a load testing or unit testing tools such as uh, SQL Performance Analyzer or Database Replay which is provided by real application testing on these uh, uh, platforms. So few more considerations like if you have an existing Oracle database and you are planning to migrate to OCI, you have several options. So diagnostic pack which is available on Oracle instances you would be able to run AWR reports and you can get the matrices like IOPS or MBPS or gigabit per second and so on. Then you need to choose the DBAS offerings such as VM based or bare metal or autonomous or uh, XRCS depending on the matrices you uh, have collected from these reports. You might consider running these AWR reports during both regular as well as peak workload and so you can compare and based on these reports you can size the uh, data management service which uh, basically suits your requirement based on either the average workload or the uh, maximum workload. These AWR reports can be generated either using enterprise manager or through a command line using AWR RPT commands. If your current install has uh, maybe a standard edition you can probably uh, want to use a stats pack because AWR reports are not available on a standard edition version of database. For rack enabled systems, you should try to pull out cluster wide data and uh, AWR uh, reports can be fetched uh, for cluster wide for a better analysis. So in addition to database matrices, you should also be able to collect server stats such as physical or virtual, how many chips uh, are there on the server, core per chips or CPU utilization, peak system memory or memory utilization, IO bandwidth, planned CPU growth or any kind of planned memory growth uh, kind of requirements. In order to get AWR report, the command line is under Oracle Home uh, inside RDBMS and admin folder. You have AWR RPT.SQL and if you create them, uh, you will be able to see uh, various parameters or matrices such as read request or write request or database address, CPU utilization, SGA size, PGA size, planned IO growth percentage or any read optimization if you have considering what kind of uh, storage media is behind the scene or any write opt optimization because of flash or uh, even looking at redo log rates uh, per second, network throughput, network latency rates, database size, uh, byte received via SQL star net to the client, IO requirements can be also considered like IOPS and IO bandwidth MB per second. So these all data will be available within AWR reports and you can fetch AWR reports for different uh, periods as I said like uh, during peak hours or normal hours or uh, you can also do AWR comparisons. Uh, so these all helps you get uh, various matrices which are required for the capacity planning. Another aspect uh, here for sizing consideration is like uh, how to calculate the IOPS. So read IOPS which is physical read total IO request per second metric from the AWR and write IOPS are uh, the physical writes total IO request per second metrics from the AWR. So for the source database are required as well as uh, you need to factor the ASM redundancy uh, which you are going to have at the destination and this ASM redundancy could be either high normal or none like if you are depending on the external redundancy. Uh, similarly read bandwidth is physical read total bytes per second metric from AWR and write bandwidth uh, is physical write total bytes per second from AWR for the source database. So required ASM redundancy is also needed uh, here which could be either high, normal or uh, none. 
So the formula to calculate the total IO bandwidth is read bandwidth plus three times of write bandwidth in case of a high redundancy and two times of write bandwidth for normal and one uh, factor as like uh, if you don't have redundancy. And in terms of total IOPS required, uh, it is going to be read IOPS plus three times of write IOPS if high, two times of write IOPS if normal and one times of write IOPS if none. So it provides network throughput estimation for size as well as IOPS consideration when selecting between different data management options such as a virtual machine database or bare metal or XRA database solutions. Now take a look at a few other uh, analysis from the AWR reports. Uh, since we are going to do a sizing or looking at consolidation, uh, we have to also look at what it shows for every synchronous single block read latency values. So think of like if the average value is greater than 40 milliseconds, it means or it translates to latency is too high there. Average active sessions core count of uh, source database. So if average active session is greater than the total number of core count present on the physical or virtual system, that indicates it might be a CPU bound uh, thing. IOPS workload in MB per second or workload in IOPS for the source database and to calculate um, the ratio of IO bandwidth uh, to IOPS can be used to characterize the source database workload as either OLTP or decision support system. Another uh, uh, factor you can uh, think about like if number of OLTP hours is between 40% and 60% the source database can be classified as mixed. Otherwise if it is less than 40% then it is decision support system. Uh, if a workflow type you have identified as OLTP and IOPS is greater than 5000, uh, then it could potentially benefit from consolidating to an Oracle XR database cloud service because of uh, it has Flask as a and uh, workload can get, get benefit uh, from the Flask as a. Workload is likely to benefit from XRATA storage based solution offered by Oracle cloud infrastructure, especially if your workload is a mixed workload because of technologies such as database in memory or XR Fusion and storage processing which are available on XR kind of systems. So in case of a cluster database configuration types of source DB, so it could be either policy managed or admin managed or non-cluster. So the suitable platform could be either virtual machine uh, database because they provide real application clusters or uh, anything related to XR. So XR data cloud service or XR data cloud at customer, autonomous databases or ATP, they all support a real application cluster. One of the goal for you uh, to uh, look at if the buffer cache hit ratio of the source database is more than 98% uh, for OLTP workload and if that is not the case then uh, you might need certain tuning or you have to factor the buffer cache to eliminate excessive IO load prior to uh, capacity planning. So workload type estimated OLTP and average wait time for event log file sync wait at the source database if it is more than 10 milliseconds that indicates excessive time to write redo information to redo log files or disk and possibility to slow disk or uh, uh, maybe because of unbashed commits. So that might require tuning the sequels in terms of commit frequency, use of no logging options or uh, checking disk contents and, and like also factoring the enhanced disk throughput. Uh, so that should be also factored within the capacity planning uh, for any new infrastructure. Another uh, interpretation could be uh, if workload type is estimated as OLTP and average wait time for event TV file sequential read is uh, greater than 15 millisecond that indicate uh, poorly tuned SQL or slow IO subsystem. So in investigation of SQL statement performing many discretes and IO subsystem for poor read times is uh, definitely recommended. If a workload type estimated is OLTP or DSS or mixed and IO workload in MB per second is greater than 500 MB per second. So every synchronous single block read latency value of source database is greater than 40 millisecond. So in that scenario, again, Oracle, XRCS or XR um, clouded customer or ATP dedicated is recommended uh, for the destination because that way you can prevent the high IO rates uh, which might impact the OLTP performance. So in next module, we will look at how to interpret sizing requirements. Till now we have covered some of the observation or uh, data points from the AWR reports and uh, 
next we are going to discuss how to interpret the sizing requirements and the tool we are going to look at is AWR Miner. So uh, AWR Miner takes data from AWR performance views and it uh, is able to provide a graphical insight and we will be uh, interpreting uh, using uh, an example. So now I will see you in the next uh, lesson.